Good afternoon all, it's Muppet time again. And yes, look, I've got my nice new center zero ammeter so that we can see the current traveling from the source, which is now a lead acid battery to the load. Uh, at the moment, that's a light bulb, but it won't be for long. Here's my pot, very simple, oops, don't wanna knock that. Very simple uh, PWM program in the Arduino, driving my MOSFET driver. I can turn the pot the current goes up and the lamp comes on. Yep, simple stuff. Turn the pot, current goes up, lamp comes on. Now that's from a lead acid battery. Um, this thing capable, of course, of lots of amps. In fact, let me just bring this down here a minute. And uh, you can see that I've got uh, a five amp fuse in there, one of these sort of uh, automotive fuses, because, um, yeah, this could kick out 20, 30, 40, 50 amps now of course um, it's not going to draw 50 amps uh, with just a 5 watt light bulb on the back end of this thing in fact uh, we're only drawing about oh what's that 200 milliamps but i'm going to replace that light bulb with this bank of super capacitors uh, three of these 2.5 volt super capacitors in series they're very depleted in voltage let's just connect that really hate these little black crop clips and it tends to be the black ones where when you press it it's so slippery it flips round like that you press it and because the silicon rubber is so slippery inside it flips round have you heard that it's really annoying isn't it um but, but yeah these are really depleted i don't know whether you can see that you can't see it very well uh 3.3 volts across the hose so little in fact that the meter is barely able to run yeah we need to get those up to 7.5 volts get them charged again and of course if I'm doing that then there's no actual current limit here between this lead acid battery and these supercapacitors so what is going to limit the current that flows from the input source of energy to the output well it's that inductor hiding behind that meter right let's just lift this up so we can see how uh, that meters plugged in it's just um, wired into a couple of banana plugs I've put it in the negative side um, because it was convenient I have a spare gap there I've got fuses in the uh, other negative gaps this one here 1.6 amps and this one two fuses in parallel 3.2 amps why have I got a higher current rating fuse on this side than this side hmm have a think about it and uh, look at this poor bulb this 5 watt bulb uh, in the last video, I was uh, doing boost experiments and putting 20 volts through this bulb, and it's kind of gone quite blackened. Uh, so yes, it survived the 20 volts, but it did go a bit blackened. Now, I just wanted to mention, before I connect a big heavy-duty power source to a big heavy-duty power receiving thing, um, a couple of sort of oddities here, uh, gotchas kind of, worrying situations if you like uh, i've got a nice simple pwm program in the arduino and you can see if i turn this pot uh, that led on the mosfet driver simply switches over from the off side which is this green led on the right to the on side the green led on the left you can see the ammeter goes up the bulb comes on and i can vary the on ratio to off ratio and that's all fine now notice that this mosfet is under control this one has a little link wire between gate and source so i can't actually switch this one at the moment but when i was doing the buck boost experiments both these mosfets were under control of the arduino and uh, you've got to be careful because if you turn them both on we've got a direct current path to ground uh, with a lead acid battery supplying that power not good if something goes wrong now look at this camera here camera here's the cable that goes to that camera because I keep it plugged in at all times to charge it. That cable comes from my PC, but so does the cable going to the Arduino. Look what happens if I pull the plug out of my camera. The PC makes a noise. This glitches, that blue light flashes. My PWM MOSFET driver goes crazy. Here's the connector. Let's plug it back into the camera. That goes crazy again. This goes crazy. The MOSFETs go crazy. Now, if I had these two MOSFETs under control of this Arduino and I plugged something USB into my computer and this starts going crazy, can you imagine the mayhem that would be caused 
here in the main circuit. So when I do the charging the supercapacitors from the lead acid battery, I'm not going to have the Arduino plugged into my PC because it goes crazy if you plug or unplug something else. So that's one of the issues which I've had to think about because I don't want to be doing this. And this is fly by wire. I mean, I'm just varying this signal on this pot, controlling a high current, high power device with a fly by wire control. I don't want any external influences. So let me just unplug the Arduino for a minute. So now nothing is driving my MOSFET driver. Now I've noticed that there is a tiny amount of leakage um, in these opto isolators and because there's a 9 volt battery here in my MOSFET driver um, what was happening was the 9 volts was somehow finding its way onto the gate of that MOSFET so when I turn the Arduino off if I left these MOSFET drivers with their 9 volt batteries connected to the MOSFETs these MOSFETs gradually turned on ever so slowly but yeah they turned on so this one was turning on and this one was turning on direct DC current path to ground, direct short potentially across a lead acid battery. Not good. So what I've done now is I've put this one mega ohm resistor across the connections that go to the MOSFET and that stops the MOSFET's um, gate source voltage creeping up when there's no control on the input of those opto isolators. If I take that out, you can see from that light bulb there that I can put a voltage on the gate of that MOSFET just by touching two of these connections, touching the other two, the ones that actually go to gate and source, like that, I can drain that voltage away. So I can put that voltage on it, drain it away. But look, if I, if I go to about there, I've got a small voltage on the gate, across the gate and source of that MOSFET. That bulb is partly on which means that this MOSFET is in its linear region. Linear, that means it's acting like a resistor and it's getting warm, getting quite warm. When the um, gate voltage is high enough that this turns on completely, then it stops getting warm because it has a very low on resistance. If I turn it completely off, which is that way, then it doesn't get hot because it's off. It's when it's in this sort of mid position. Let me just sort of dab that. Yeah, with the filament just barely on, this has gone resistive and it starts to get warm. So that's the um, voltage on the across the gate and source creeping up because of leakage, tiny amounts of leakage. But you can see that the tendency, if I leave it, is for this bulb to get brighter because the voltage across that MOSFET is creeping up. Now this one mega ohm resistor it doesn't affect the circuit in any way. I've just gone and lost it. Yeah, it doesn't affect the circuit in any way, but if I put it across gate and source, it just holds or it drains away any voltage that's on the capacitive input of this MOSFET, the, the voltage across gate and source, and it stops these MOSFETs sort of creeping on ever so slowly, which you don't want if both these MOSFETs are under gate driver control. So uh, that one mega ohm resistor and also um, having the Arduino powered by a power bank, which is what I'm going to do, not powered by a, P uh, a USB port on my computer, should hopefully solve any of the problems of MOSFETs not doing what I want them to do and responding to their fly-by-wire control and going crazy and doing their own thing and causing problems. Right, here's the power bank I'm going to use. Um, I've got my little uh, mini B connector there to power the Arduino because this one you're able to uh, disable the auto off so that it stays on. I don't want that thing auto shutting off halfway through my high power experiment. Um, so let's plug that in. So I'm not going to be using the uh, Arduino powered by my PC. That's the PC connector there. Just sit there. Um, switch on the power bank. That takes a few seconds to come on. When that comes on, I will be under, as I call it, my fly-by-wire control. There it is. I can adjust the MOSFET driver with the pot here. Raise the current going to the light bulb. Right, it's time to connect the output of this to the supercapacitor. Now we've got this um, diode here to prevent a back feed. So we will be shoveling energy one way. I've got 12 volts here. I've got a maximum of 7.5 here. 
Um, so we only need buck, we don't need boost. Let's get some crop clips. Right, really heavy duty uh, crop clip made with 17 amp cable. So I'll use that on the negative. Let's plug that in there. I can leave that bulb plugged in actually because it's not going to do any real harm. So that goes on the negative. And uh, original straight from China, super wimpy, uh, feeble little red wire because that could act as a fuse. It's another fuse in the system if this all goes horribly wrong. Let's plug that onto the positive. Now that means that the supercapacitors, and I've lowered the blind so that we can read that, the supercapacitors will now be powering this bulb. So this bulb comes on dim with the supercapacitors at 3.2 volts. Now, if I start turning the PWM, I should be able to put current from the lead acid battery into the supercapacitors. Let's try it and let's see. Let's just bring the camera up a little bit so you can see the pot. And let's see what happens in terms of current. I need to come up a fair way because I need to get to 3.3 volts on this side. Whoops. And that won't happen immediately. But then the current starts coming up. Let's take it up to one amp. And it's quite sensitive at this level. Um, let's just see how much current I can get out of this thing. Two amps, three amps, four amps, five. In excess of five amps. Yes, yeah, so I've got full control of current. Let's just take that to one amp. And we should be bringing the voltage of this up. I can't see that very well. Yeah, 3.6 volts. That's good. The lamp will get brighter. Now I'm taking this to seven and a half volts. That's going to take a long time at one amp. So let's start winding the current right up. Now this current, remember 12 volts on this side, uh, only three and a half volts on this side. What we're actually looking here is the secondary side current. The primary side current will be much lower because we've got a voltage step down and therefore a current step up. That's why this polyfuse, which is only 1.6 amps, is not even warm. That's surviving really well. This polyfuse, which is two in parallel, 3.2 amps, is going to be able to survive three amps of transfer, four and a half volts. Let's go four amps. Let's go five amps. Let's hold it at five amps for a minute. How hot's that thing getting? Oh, it's quite toasty warm. Let's bring that back down to three amps. 4.9 volts. Yeah, that's heading up. I probably have to be careful with the current because I have bought some heat sinks actually for these MOSFETs, so it would help if that had a little heat sink on it. Am I getting any problems with polyfuses? No, but three amps is good. Four amps is better. Five amps is great. Perhaps I'll do five amps for a bit. That MOSFET will get hot, but we can back it off. Notice the current is coming down. If I let go, let me just set it to three amps. Let go, the current will drift down because as that voltage comes up, so that current gain will start to level off. So the secondary side current will come down. The primary side current must be going up, surely. Yeah, it probably is, we can't see it. It probably is going up. Uh, 5.8 volts. So this is the way to charge these capacitors rapidly and under control i'm able to vary the current by varying the pwm now the only thing i've got to do is when these get up to seven and a half volts or near there these red leds will start coming on and at that point i have to be careful not to exceed the discharge capability of these protection circuits because it's that that's going to stop each individual capacitor going over voltage and i just know because i've done this before um, that this middle capacitor's protection LED will probably come on first. That current's falling away a bit. Let's get that back up to three amps. Is this thing hot? Oh yeah, that's too hot to touch now. Too hot to touch. But everything's holding, isn't it? These polyfuses are holding. Oh, that one's quite warm now. Yes, that's right, because the primary side current is coming up relative to the secondary side current as the voltages start to get more evenly matched. Let's give it a bit more current. I want to get this up to 7.5 volts. It's not going to happen at these sort of wimpy currents. Let's go 4 amps. Let's get that up to 7 volts. It's not going to take long, is it? I can hold it there for a bit. Right, 7 volts. Let's come back down to 3 amps. 
Okay, I'm waiting for these uh, red LEDs to come on on the supercapacitors. And then I know that really I need to limit this to about half an amp or one amp probably at the most once these red LEDs start coming on. Otherwise, I'm going to take a supercapacitor over voltage and I certainly don't want to do that. Is this thing hot? It's probably red hot, isn't it? Oh, there goes the middle LED. So let's back this off. No more than an amp. So this is really the profile of charging these supercapacitors that I want. I want high current to start with to get the voltage on these supercapacitors up quickly. Let's go a bit more current because that's dropped away. Let's get that middle LED back on. And then once the first of these LEDs comes on, I have to back it off to a current that will keep these LEDs from going too bright, I suppose. They, they are, there is a maximum brightness. But in other words, I need to make sure I don't overwhelm the ability of these protection circuits to offset the current and stop it going into the capacitor. Now, where's, ah, right, the second LED is just starting to come on, if I take that up a bit. So I need to back this off, whoops, to about one amp. And I've now got two of these LEDs on 7.4 volts, and I'm just waiting for this third capacitor to come up to voltage. I could put a meter on there and measure that separately, but it'll come up eventually. Right, we've got 7.5 volts on the supercapacitor bank. I'm keeping this under an amp, about 0.2, uh, no, probably about 400 milliamps is being lost in that bulb. So we're probably getting a net input to the capacitor bank of about 600 milliamps, something like that. Uh, should be seeing that third LED come on soon because that should be held to about 2.5 volts. That should be held to 2.5 volts. So we should have getting on for 2.5 volts on that third capacitor. Let's just nudge the current up a bit and say, yeah, I can just coax that one on by nudging the current up. So we're pretty close. If I hold the current at one amp, now, by nudging the current up, I may have briefly taken that over voltage. But as long as I keep this current at a moderate level now, the protection circuit on that center and that left capacitor should be holding them down to uh, no more than two and a half volts. And that third one is now starting to creep up. So that's it. I've charged the supercapacitor bank from a lead acid battery controlling the amount of current just with the PWM percentage on this uh, Arduino driving the MOSFET driver, driving the MOSFET. Now that should have cooled down now because I've been at moderate current for quite a while. Done! Charged! Right, so now I'm going to back this pot right off. So zero current flows. It can't back feed from the supercapacitors because of this diode here. You'll see that these LEDs all start to go out now. The voltage is dropping away because this light bulb is on the side of the supercapacitor so it's, it's connected directly across them. So the light bulb is now discharging those supercapacitors. Protection circuits, LEDs go off and the voltage on those go out. So yeah, there it is. Muppet 2 um, used to charge those supercapacitors rapidly. Got myself up to 5 amps while I was doing that. And then as soon as the protection circuits come on, we back the current right off so that we don't overwhelm those protection circuits. That's the way to charge these supercapacitors quickly at first, slowly at the end. Cheerio.